Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. This is the Mountain Travel Sobek webinar about our Victoria Falls and Hawaii Safari adventure. My name is Hilary Walters, and I am the Africa Specialist here at Mountain Travel Sobek. I'm really excited about this trip. I've uh, actually gone out and scouted it just a couple months ago. You'll see me right there in the front smiling at you from the first seat on the right in that photo there. And um, I'm really, really excited to share this with you. Today, we've brought in our partner and uh, Zimbabwe expert, Tad Bradley, to tell us about this experience. And stay tuned at the end as well. We'll have time for a question and answer session. And I'm sure we'll have lots of stories and information to give you uh, throughout and at the end. So Tad, if you're ready, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Hillary, very much. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the time uh, this morning to, to chat about one of my favorite places on the African continent, Zimbabwe. I'm lucky enough to have uh, spent a fair bit of time in Zim uh, over the years, and I'm always excited to talk about uh, the safari experience there. And as you experienced recently, Hillary, it's one of the most dynamic, um, active, and uh, exclusive safari destinations in Africa today. So um, a really fantastic uh, spot to experience what the continent um, has to offer. And you can see from this first, first photo, as Hillary mentioned, there she is. Um, having dinner with elephants. This is at um, one of the lodges on this itinerary, uh, Nahimba, um, and uh, it's an amazing experience being able to be this close to, to elephants. Um, and that's one of the things that makes Zimbabwe and Wangi National Park so exceptional is the, the level of uh, close encounters that you can have with wildlife, in particular elephants. Um, we're going to start with a, a little bit of an orientation where we are in the world for those of you that are familiar or unfamiliar with Southern Africa. You can see um, where we are here, South Africa in the far south, Zimbabwe, uh, just north of that, bordered by Botswana, Mozambique, and Zambia. Of course, Victoria Falls is one of the seven natural wonders of the world, uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site, and what most people know uh, about, uh, about Zimbabwe. And that's um, really the beginning of our safari. A lot of folks will fly into Johannesburg and then up to Vic Falls. Um, and what we focus on in, in this itinerary is the northwest section of Zimbabwe. You can see my mouse here in the, the upper left. That's the Wangi National Park, 5,000 square miles of amazing wilderness, lots of wildlife, and then Victoria Falls, uh, as I said, UNESCO World Heritage Site. We're just going to be spending time in this area of the country. There's a lot of other amazing parts of Zimbabwe, but for this particular trip, uh, we really focus on that region um, because the wildlife is so exceptional in Wangi. And of course, if you're going to Zimbabwe, you have to go and see Victoria Falls as well. Just zooming in on this particular itinerary and some of the lodges um, that uh, you'll be staying at on this trip. As I mentioned, you begin here in Victoria Falls. Here's the International Airport. We start at Gorges Lodge uh, and then head down into Wangi National Park for three nights at Bomani Tented Lodge in the southeast corner of the park. And then you venture into one of the most remote and exceptional wilderness parts uh, and camps in Africa, really, Josie Benini, which is about 100 kilometers from any other uh, camp in the park. So it's very remote, incredibly exclusive, and very wild. You'll see some photos in a bit. Spend three nights down at Josie Benini here in the far south of Wangi, and then fly up over Wangi, a beautiful uh, air safari, if you will, back to Victoria Falls Airport, and then finish with a couple of nights at Zambezi Sands Lodge, which is upstream of Victoria Falls, where you get to uh, experience the wild Zambezi River. As I mentioned, this safari and most safaris in Zimbabwe starts at the brand new, brand spanking new, renovated Victoria Falls International Airport. Most uh, people that uh, arrive here will be flying from Johannesburg um, on either British Airways or South African Airways. But with this new renovated airport, which just opened about a year and a half ago, um, the airport was expanded, the runway was expanded. It's now allowing for there to be direct international flights, uh, wide body aircraft into Victoria Falls, so you can avoid having to connect through Johannesburg. Two of the first um, of those flights are with Ethiopian and Kenya Airways. So if you are, a United Flyer using their mileage program. Uh, Ethiopian is a great option for you to their partners in Star Alliance. And if you uh, use Delta, then Kenya is a great option because uh, they are partners as well. So hopefully in the future, there'll be more direct flights into Victoria Falls. 
allowing just even easier access um, into the country. Um, but for now, as I mentioned, most people are, will likely fly through Johannesburg um, and you end up here in the falls. And this is your first view after being picked up by a mountain travel Sobek representative at the airport. We whisk you about 30 minutes from the airport to Gorge's Lodge, which is located about 11 kilometers downstream of the falls on the Batoka Gorge. This is about 900 feet, uh, feet from the gorge edge down to the Zambezi River below. You can see a spectacular location. This is the sunrise um, over the Batoka Gorge uh, from the lodge. This is the same river where you can do the one of the best class five river rafting experiences in the world on the Zambezi River. And at certain times of year, you'll see rafters come floating by after their exhilarating um, day of rafting the Zambezi. The takeout point is actually just beyond that uh, curve in the river you know, beyond there. Gorge's Lodge is, uh, we have uh, a tented portion as well as uh, a more chalet portion. This is the tented version of the lodge, um, beautiful spacious tents and what's really amazing about and exceptional about the property um, beyond the fact that uh, it's so close to Victoria Falls is the that every single unit looks out over that amazing view of the Batoka Gorge. So this is one of the decks on the tented uh, units but all of the um, rooms have this amazing view looking out over over the gorge. And while there isn't any wildlife um, in this area, this is actually communal land. It's uh, the first lodge to be built in Zimbabwe in partnership um, with the local community on their land. It was built back in 1995. Um, and as a result, there isn't any wildlife here, um, but there are incredible birds of prey that nest in the uh, Batoka Gorge, and these are black eagles, and we do a very exciting and special black eagle sundowner interaction on that first night of this safari where you get to watch the black eagles come soaring over the lodge with a gin and tonic or a glass of wine in hand and watch the sunset over the Batoka Gorge. Really a uh, fun experience to begin the safari as you wind down after, uh, you know, the long flight to Africa. We also do a local uh, presentation from um, a local community dance organization that comes and presents or comes and uh, performs for guests and it becomes as you can see in this photo a very interactive um, and uh, engaging experience with the guests it's not just uh, the local people performing um, this is actually they involve the, the guests as well and, and these guys and, and gals are from the local village that is uh, our partners in this lodge. So these these uh, community members are really our landlords, actually, as well as uh, as uh, incredible dancers and um, a cappella performers. So this is um, usually done right before a barbecue or a braai, as we say in Southern Africa, um, as your first meal at Gorges before uh, the following day, really kicking off the safari with a tour of UNESCO World Heritage Sites and one of the seven wonders of the world, Victoria Falls. There's a beautiful view from above the falls. Of course, we'll spend uh, a couple of hours exploring the rainforest, um, taking in the various views of the, of, the, uh, of the Victoria Falls. There are so many different viewpoints on the Zimbabwean side um, to experience uh, and see what is just an extraordinary um, natural phenomenon that is the Victoria Falls. The largest sheet of falling water in the world. It's not the highest, it's not the widest, uh, but when you combine the volume of the water um, and the height of the falls, it's the largest falling sheet of water in the world. And uh, it's really just as breathtaking. So we start off that morning uh, touring the falls, exploring Victoria Falls town itself, and then uh, head off down to kick off the safari right away in, in Wangi National Park. Now, Wangi is, is really one of Africa's great parks. It's 5,000 square miles of wilderness, which is uh, about the size of Kruger National Park and the Serengeti in Tanzania, if you're, if you're familiar with those two parks. Uh, however, they have far fewer visitors. There were only 40,000 visitors to Wangi in 2016. So it is a very exclusive safari experience. Um, in Kruger in South Africa, there are 1.3 million visitors of a park of just slightly larger. So you can see the difference in terms of the visitor numbers and therefore the number of uh, other vehicles you'll see on the ground while on safari. But Wangi still has uh, some of, you know, it, it does have the largest population of elephant of any national park in, in Africa, 46,000 elephants at the, the last, uh, at the last census. Um, 
And so it has uh, about 500 lions and an amazing and um, strong population of wild dog as well as, as well as cheetah, especially in the southern part of the park, which you'll see, which is where Bomani Tented Lodge is. So an amazing wildlife experience, um, but one that you don't have to share with very many people, which makes it uh, a great value and, uh, and obviously a much better experience. So just to orient you again, we're here from Gorges. We're going to drive about two and a half hours down a, a paved road to the small town of Det. And this is, again, one of the very unique things of this safari that you will not find really anywhere else in Africa, is that you get to uh, experience Zimbabwe wildlife uh, on a train. We're going to be heading down from the t small town of Det along this railway line down to Bomani Tented Lodge. This is about a two and a half hour trip. And this is the railway line that Cecil Rhodes uh, laid back in the turn of the century uh, when he was trying to connect Cape Town to Cairo. And this railway line uh, reached the Victoria Falls in 1904 when he built um, uh, for the, the Queen's Jubilee of the year, and he, he built the Victoria Falls Hotel um, at the time for, to, uh, to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee and that amazing Victoria Falls Bridge, uh, which, which runs over the Zambezi River right at the Victoria Falls. So it's really a bit of a step back in time, traveling on this old railway line uh, that, that demarcates the eastern edge of uh, Wangi National Park. So while you're traveling on this um, antique railway car, uh, having lunch and drinks and enjoying the view, you'll be seeing wildlife like this and sometimes a traffic jam with uh, lions or elephants on the track. Uh, there's great wildlife viewing. The nice thing is that uh, you're able to do this all while being safely uh, located in the, in the, in the, via, in the railway, rail car and uh, with a gin and tonic in hand or, or lunch as well. If you have families, this is a great uh, activity for families um, because again, you're able to safely view wildlife. Kids are able to move around and eat in the in the railway car. You're not cooped up in a in a minibus transferring to your lodge. It's open air, and of course, uh, kids love to be able to say they drove a train uh, in Africa. And here's this little little guy um, saying that uh, he was a railway engineer for for uh, a few minutes while in Zimbabwe. Here's a view of the train from the outside. This is on arrival at uh, Bomani Tented Lodge. So this is after about two and a half hours of experiencing um, this incredibly unique and, as I said, kind of turn back the clock experience. Hillary, if you um, you got to experience this when you were in Zimbabwe in June, I don't know if you have anything else to add about what that experience was like for you uh, on safari. Yeah, no, I, I did. It was so much fun. And, and funny enough, with our group, we didn't have any kids traveling with us. But I'm not joking. I've said it before to travelers I've talked to. We felt like a bunch of kids, all of us adults. We we're so excited with the wind blowing in our hair and, you know, lions all over the place and elephants in every which corner. And it's the first time you're really on safari on the trip. And so you know, just there's so much excitement in the air and it's completely different than any kind of, um, you know, safari experience I've had before. It's a real treat for first timers and people who've done a lot of safari. I think you're going to find it's a highlight of the trip. Yeah, absolutely. I think you nailed it. It really is something uh, totally unique in Africa and that appeals to both the first timers and to the safari veterans. There's very few safari veterans who have said they can uh, drink a gin and tonic and watch lions uh, and elephants uh, on a railway car um, in Africa. So very, very cool experience. You get to uh, Bomani Tented Lodge, you're met by our safari vehicles there and head off on your three uh, days of safari here in the southeast corner of Wangi National Park. Here's Bomani Tented Lodge, beautiful uh, kind of old school safari style lodge built on the edge of the Ngamo Plains which are the largest open plains in Wangi National Park. So Wangi doesn't have huge, massive plains like the Serengeti or the Maasai Mara, for example, in, uh, in Tanzania and Kenya. But the Ngamo Plains is the largest open area of the park. And therefore, the wildlife viewing is really exceptional. Um, you get lots of plains game. And, uh, and of course, then you get lots of predators. Lions and cheetah in particular are... are uh, uh, have a, a large population in the southern part of the park because of these big open plains. And there they are. These are the um, uh, some of our uh, 
cheetahs that uh, were recently born about a year, year and a half ago, and uh, this picture was taken about six months ago um, with mom and, uh, and four of her cubs uh, who are now sub-adults, and um, this mother has been basically single-handedly repopulating the southern part of Wangi with, uh, with baby cheetahs. She's an amazing mom who manages to raise uh, almost entire litters of cheetahs every year, which is uh, uh, something that's not very typical because cheetahs are persecuted among the, the wild cats in Africa. But this mom does an amazing job. So you'll see these cheetah more than likely um, when you're at Bomani Tented Lodge, not necessarily strolling by your tent, but uh, likely out on safari. The interiors of the tents, very spacious, um, and they all look out either over the plains or over the water hole at the lodge. You can see the interior of the of the bathrooms there as well. So this is a tented camp, but certainly not camping by any means. For those of us that are used to, you know, camping in North Face tents, these are very spacious and, and comfortable tents. Um, and there's our cheetahs again, as I, as we Hillary mentioned, you know, seeing uh, wildlife from the train. You'll also see wildlife using the tracks um, to their advantage, especially cats. They can use them as a high point to uh, to try to spy prey um, and these cheetah look like they're actually just relaxing uh, enjoying the sunset um, and this yeah, is the, and I just want to throw out those that photo was taken on my trip just a couple months ago so uh, these guys are there and you you really have a great chance of seeing them yeah this is um, a great example of a of an afternoon um, drive photo as the Sun is beginning to set that really amazing golden glow that you get uh, in at and on in an African um, afternoon as the sun is beginning to set here. And these cheetah did a great job for posing for you, uh, Hillary, and, and your, your group. Yeah, they sure did. <laughs> In addition to the cheetah, there's lots and lots of, uh, of lions as well. There's about 5, 500 lions in Wangi uh, estimate today. And um, there's a big baby boom of lions in Southern Wangi right now as well. So we're seeing lots of new uh, lion cubs running around, which is also very exciting. And uh, your, you know, your chances of seeing lion are very good with, with three nights at Bomani. Um, and you know, you can see you in, in a safari vehicle, you can really get up quite close to the wildlife um, and very safely. And uh, here we have a great photo of Wangi's amazing elephant. As I mentioned, 46,000 elephant. And Wangi's elephants um, is a large population, but they've also been a well-protected population. So they're very well behaved. As one of my colleagues uh, and a guide in Zimbabwe likes to say, they uh, they generally are not aggressive toward vehicles or or people. Obviously, there's there's limits on what you can do, but uh, they are very used to the vehicles being around and um, and oftentimes pose very nicely for for photographs. But one of the great things about um, Wangi and about Zimbabwe in general is um, the ability to be very spontaneous on safari, and it's something that I think has sadly been lost in, in other destinations where it's a little bit more regimented in terms of your activities. Um, and in, in Zimbabwe, basically your day, um, you make a plan and then you see what happens out on safari. And when you're in the park, the vehicles do have to stay on the, on the roads, the, the dirt tracks. But what's fantastic is that Zimbabwe has, has the best trained guides in all of Africa. Um, it takes a minimum of six to seven years to become a, uh, a walking guide in Zimbabwe. And so when you have that level of training and you're in a vehicle, um, while you do have to stay on the roads, if you see something happening um, off road, you can hop out of the vehicle with your guide and go on a walk and get up a little bit closer. As these guys are doing, they're not really walking, they're kind of scooting on their bums up to this, to this uh, buffalo herd. But that's one thing that makes Zimbabwe so cool is the ability to go out on walks um, and we can tailor the experience to your level of comfort, to your level of fitness, to your level of adventure. Um, we, we can do a, a complete walking safari where you never get into a vehicle if you prefer. Or as I said, you can really um, enjoy the spontaneity of the experience by being out on a drive and then being able to hop out of the vehicle and stretch your legs a little bit, get up in close and personal with an elephant herd. Um, and again, we're able to do this because of that incredible level of training that these Zimbabwean professional guides have, un, have undergone. As I mentioned, wild dogs as well. There's a very strong um, population of wild dogs, which are Africa's most, one of Africa's most threatened predators, sadly. But in Wangi, they're well protected um, and we have a good chance of seeing them, especially in the southern part of the park. There's a pack um, that's just a stone's throw from Bomani Tented Lodge. 
and actually they have been denning uh, in the Bomani concession, which is where the, the, the camp is for the past several years. So they really like uh, our area of the park. And your day typically uh, will will be it will end here on your first couple uh, first night in safari uh, with sundowners. Um, and here's a great shot of again being able to get up and close and personal with with wildlife um, and enjoying uh, the amazing African sunset um, around some incredible wildlife. And and then finishing up around a waterhole with some elephants um, slurping in the water hole as you, uh, as you slurp your soup and, and drink your wine and enjoy an incredible meal. The other uh, unique differentiating factor of this particular safari and what I love what Mountain Travel has done here is really integrated the community aspect to it. It's very important um, philosophically, I think, for MTS as well as for, uh, for these lodges to have this strong connection with local people. Without the people's support, it's very hard to protect wildlife and to, for wildlife to thrive. So we really involve the local communities in the operation of these lodges. As I mentioned, Gorge's Lodge is, uh, is built on community land and uh, in, in Southern Wangi, we uh, both Bomani Tented Lodge and another one of our lodges are also built on community land. Therefore, we have this incredibly strong bond with those local people. So we do a, a, a village experience where you, um, you go and, and meet the local people. It's not a choreographed experience by any means. This is not culture on stage. It's not a show. It's very much an organic, um, meaningful, um, unchoreographed experience of, of seeing what their life is like living here on the edge of this amazing national park, dealing with wild animals on a daily basis. We oftentimes, especially for family groups, will take um, uh, the kids will be able to walk to school with the local school children. So you do about uh, two or three K. There are no um, yellow school buses in Zimbabwe. So kids are walking to school anywhere from five you know, to two kilometers a day. And so we join them for part of that walk, arrive at school and then have an interaction um, with the school kids. And there's Hillary um, uh, talking to some of the the local school kids, as you can see, just that incredible level of engagement as well. They're so excited to meet um, visitors from overseas. And because of our strong connection with these communities, we're really their neighbors. Um, and they then, by extension, welcome guests of these lodges um, as friends visiting our neighbors from overseas. So there's a really meaningful connection with the people. Um, Hillary uh, got to do a, a lesson as well. We typically do a, a Chichewa lesson for the uh, for the local people for the visitors. Um, these kids have been battling to learn English. Uh, English is the national language of Zimbabwe, um, and so we turn the tables and we we teach the uh, the guests. Um, it's, sorry, not Chichewa, in a different country, Indibeli, which is a click language. Um, and so it's very fun for the kids to listen to the visitors trying to pronounce the clicks after they've been trying to uh, to learn the difference between uh, you know through and and uh, and to and prepositions and all of these all of these challenging things we have with English, um, and they get to see the guests struggle to uh, to pronounce the clicks. So we try to make it as much of an interactive experience. Uh, as possible, uh, similar to the dance program at Gorge's Lodge. So from the village, uh, other activities that you'll do in your, in your uh, three days down in, in Bomani, um, we'll be dining outside, having lunch with elephants. We show, showed a picture earlier of dinner with elephants, but we try to do a lot of outdoor dining. And here these guests are um, enjoying lunch um, at a water hole just before they head down into one of uh, our um, very unique, other very unique features of, of uh, this safari, which is what we call the lookup blind. And you may not notice here, but just between these elephants' legs, you see these two people with a camera. This is a an underground shipping container which was buried, had um, had viewing uh, viewing uh, windows cut into it, and uh, disguised to look like a an ant hill. Um, and as a result, you have these incredible toe level views, uh, toenail level views of elephants um, looking up at these elephants as they're drinking. There's Hillary um, enjoying that. You can see she's got her iPhone there taking pictures um, and you can get extraordinary photos, literally National Geographic level photos with an iPhone, um, with a camera phone from uh, five feet away from these amazing creatures. Hillary, uh, can you relay a little bit of your experience in the look up blind? 
Sure. Um, I think when we first got in there, there weren't any elephants right in front of us. And uh, suddenly we heard some pounding to the left and, and we sort of stuck our heads out just a little and you see the feet walking right in front of you. And then from there, just dozens and dozens of them kept coming. There's, there's, they just seem to cycle through all day long. So you're pretty much guaranteed to see something incredible. And um, I can't speak highly enough of it. Yeah, it's one of those experiences that uh, the guests, you know, continue to talk about after they return home, and largely because of being able to show friends and family photos like this that you can take with, with your phone on your camera. You're literally at toenail level and that close to these elephants. Um, this is a photo taken with a about a hundred dollar point and shoot a few years ago. Um, no Photoshop, uh, and that's taken from the lookup blind. Not a professional at all, but it it could be in National Geographic. It's that's that amazing of a photo. So. One of those very cool experiences. We do that usually right after lunchtime. As Hillary said, the elephants typically come to the waterhole um, in the early afternoon and spend a couple of hours there um, enjoying the rest of your lunch, um, some drinks, and this incredible close encounters with, with wildlife and with elephants in particular. So from Bomani, three days here down at Bomani Tented Lodge in the southeast corner, we then do an all-day safari deep into the southern part of the park to Josie Benini Camp, which is as I mentioned before, one of the most remote camps in all of Africa. Um, it is uh, an, a, a, an awarded camp. We received the Ethical Travel Award from the Guardian newspaper a few years ago for the work we're doing there to protect wildlife. Um, and um, it's uh, one of those, you know, really back to basics, um, back to the origins of safari type of camps. You can see it's a, they're large dome tents. The interiors are very spacious um, and you have a in-suite bath with running water and a flush toilet at the back, um, but you do have a bucket shower, which I think is something that's that's very special and unique, um, something that most safari goers should experience, and that's where you heat up a bucket of water over the fire, dump it into a large bucket, and then you have um, a spigot on the end for your for your shower. So you don't have a running shower, but you've got this incredible bucket shower experience, which is something very special, and, and again, a step back in time to the origins of safari. Down at Josie Benini, we're also pioneering some solar technology to power the camp as well as uh, the water pumps for the water hole. Um, and this is something that we're trying to roll out across all of our uh, camps in the in the near future, um, having more using solar technology to uh, to reduce the amount of, uh, of fuel that's used. There's the water hole of, of Josie. Um, again, it's an elephant magnet, especially during the dry season, which is uh, from you know June through to October, November. These elephants just come pouring into this water hole to, uh, to, to slurp their, their daily allowance. Elephants need lots and lots of water, um, and they're traveling large dis distances um, to find it, and so they spend lots of time gathered around these water holes. And again, you can, they're focused really on, on drinking water, and so you're able to get these kind of amazing, intimate, uh, close encounter photos with elephants, and there's a gentleman with an iPhone, again, taking a, a picture of some elephants. This is at the Josie Benini waterhole. We also have a lookup blind at Josie Benini, so if you didn't get enough time uh, at snout level or uh, or toenail level at the lookup blind near Bomani, you'll have another chance at Josie Benini uh, to get those kind of photographs. And one of the really unique things of Josie is the ability to get out on mountain bikes and explore the bush uh, on a bike safely with your with your professional guide, um, but that just opens up the experience. And for those people that are looking to be more active on safari, and in addition to being able to do lots of walking and zim, we can also at Josie uh, do these mountain biking safaris. So that's one complaint you often get from really active folks uh, on safari. You know, safari is oftentimes in other destinations about being in a vehicle to go look at as much wildlife as possible, and of course. You're also eating and drinking a lot at these amazing safari camps that have incredible food. Um, and so you don't get a lot of physical activity and you can come back with your Safari 15. Um, but here in Zimbabwe, we give you a chance to work off um, all of that food and, and drink um, on foot and by, by bicycle. And being so remote in the southern part of the park, you get these incredible views of, of the stars. Um, and we actually uh, have beds on um, in the tents or on wheels. So for those who want to have a star bed experience, um, you can roll the bed out onto these very large decks on the front of the of the tents and uh, and sleep under the stars. Again, safely about a meter and a half up off the ground, 
but you have this extraordinary view of the cosmos, the Milky Way, um, because there is literally no other civilization with any light pollution for uh, hundreds of, of miles away. So after three nights in this amazing remote part of the, the park in the south of Wangi, we hop into a light aircraft and fly up, I do an air safari over uh, Wangi National Park back to Victoria Falls. You can see here, uh, just on the map from Josie, we fly back up over here to the falls and then drive uh, about an hour to Zambezi Sands River Lodge, which is just upstream of Victoria Falls, located on the Zambezi River. So for the, for those of you that, uh, you know, after spending, what, six nights, seven nights um, in Wangi National Park, out on safari, getting dusty, uh, going after, looking for wildlife and vehicles on foot and on a bicycle, here's your chance to, uh, to kind of dust off, enjoy some greenery um, of the river, and then uh, and, and be able to really uh, immerse yourself in this very pristine and very uh, serene and peaceful environment um, of Zambezi Sands. This is the main lodge. There's that large deck with a fire pit overlooking the river, a great place to enjoy a cocktail and, and look out at the, uh, at the river and the wildlife coming by. At Zambezi Sands, we have these huge tents with each with individual plunge pools and large decks. So a lot of folks, again, after being on safari for uh, for seven days, like to just spend their morning with a cup of coffee, uh, lounging on their deck, um, in, you know, sitting in their plunge pool in the afternoons with a glass of wine and just looking out over the, the beautiful river. The interiors of the tents are, are large and spacious and comfortable. And then, of course, because we're on the amazing you know, upper Zambezi, we can do lots of different activities in the water. And the two that uh, we do most often are a motorized safari, um, going out on a sundowner cruise um, on a motorized boat, as you can see, see in the river there, or for the more active folks and more adventurous who want to get out on the river and, again, uh, put a little muscle into it, we have the ability to do a canoe or kayak safari on the Zambezi. There's lots of different ways to do it. This is a, a view back toward the lodge. You can see the main lodge behind the, the uh, kayakers there, um, and there's a rapid that's right in front of camp. And um, it really looks a little bit more intense than it is. It's, you actually kind of just bounce along on the rapids, but it does give you a little bit of a good rush of adrenaline and a little bit of water in the face, and, and uh, you feel like a, a bit of a, uh, a champion kayaker um, for about uh, two or three minutes as you're going through the rapids. But there's a lot of other more serene channels for those that, uh, that don't want to, to brave the rapids, um, where you can view wildlife and just kind of float along and enjoy the experience of the Zambezi. And we usually finish the kayaking experience with either a sundowner on the edge of the Zambezi or uh, brunch uh, along the banks of the river. And you see the common theme here, doing lots of outdoor dining is something that we try to do as much as possible. Um, again, something that's very unique about Zimbabwe, being able to dine outdoors out in the bush um, on a regular basis. And this is where you'll end your safari with a, a couple of nights here along the banks of the river. Enjoy one last sunset before heading off uh, to your back home or to your next destination. Um, and then one thing just to cover here at the end is, is what makes this particular safari so special beyond the exclusivity uh, where you're, you're not sharing this experience with very many other vehicles or other people because of the low numbers of visitors that, that, uh, that you'll see in Wangi. Uh, obviously it's very active. Uh, and you have some of the best guides in Africa, but you also are really contributing to an amazing community uh, and conservation story in Zimbabwe. And, and Envelo Safari Lodges is so committed to helping the communities thrive around their lodges. We've drilled water and, and provide water not only for wildlife in Wangi National Park, but also for the people and the communities outside. We've drilled over 60 water wells for different communities along the edge of the park. And clean water is obviously so critical to life and we take it for granted here. Um, and here's some schoolgirls uh, pumping water on detention actually. They were sent to go pump water uh, because of misbehaving in class. And here they are posing for a great photo. We've built over eight different classroom blocks um, and, and converted what were really poorly maintained um, schools, sadly by the national government, into these incredible learning environments you can see here. 
on the interior of this classroom. This is a, a, a place that's, that students can really learn. You saw the photos from earlier um, of, the, of the school experience with Hillary and, and being able to interact with the students and they are able to uh, to learn in this kind of amazing uh, learning environment. On the right hand side you see a, a, a teacher's cottage, an old teacher's cottage. These teachers in these remote communities are coming from from the cities and, and uh, spending sometimes years at a time living in these rural communities and they were asked to live in these hovels on the right so Mbello has has built a number of new teachers accommodations to take care of these heroes that are educating um, the young Zimbabweans in these rural areas. So they actually have a nice place to, uh, to spend the night after a long day in the classroom. There was a drought recently in Zimbabwe, actually in most of Southern Africa, and as a result, uh, the crops failed. So we were feeding over 2,600 students a day, feeding them lunch. Uh, and here's two of the kids enjoying their sudza, which is uh, like a cornmeal staple, and their beans. And then one of the proudest um, accomplishments of the company really is now uh, six years of what we call the, the dentist safari, which is a mobile uh, clinics. We set up mobile clinics throughout Wangi National Park and Victoria Falls and treat patients um, uh, and treat you know, their, their uh, dental problems. And um, we've done over 11,000 patients in the last six years. Um, these communities that prior to this had never seen a dentist in their lives are now getting annual first world dental care. We have 17 or 18 Spanish and Italian dentists who come down every November to put these kind of clinics on. So this is life-saving dentistry taking care of people. We're also now moved on to optometry as well, bringing uh, eyeglasses for, um, for the communities. It's a, it's a cheaper and easier way uh, to, to really make an incredible difference in the lives of local people. You can see this this old timer here who hadn't been able to see for five or ten years for the want of a two dollar pair of recycled eyeglasses and he can now um, he can now see and, and you can see the joy in his face. This is what you're contributing to by going on the safari, these types of programs. And it really comes back to the philosophy of, of the company, which is, you know, it's not just about the wildlife and the tourists. We need both of those um, components to take care of the 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 environment and the wildlife. We need the tourists, we need the wildlife to be thriving, but in order to do that we really have to involve the local people and get them engaged in, um, in taking care of, uh, of their resources really, of this, in, these amazing wildlife and environmental resources that they have. And without the local people we're not able to do that. So um, we, I guess I said, we really, um, it's a passion of this company to take care of our partners um, and our community members as well as the wildlife. And it all works together, uh, that, that trinity, tourists, wildlife, and the local people. And you have a successful safari uh, product. All right, so that's, that's the end of uh, the presentation of the Victoria Falls and Wangi Safari Adventure. Um, you can see it's a 10-day it's a safari, and this is you know, customizable as well. Uh, but this itinerary, as designed, by Hillary and the MTS team is fantastic um, and, and very active. But again, we can, uh, we can tailor it to your level of activity um, and to uh, your interests as well. It's very, very um, customizable. Um, and Hillary is your expert. She's just been there um, and has experienced and scouted and designed this itinerary. So she's the person to talk to to, uh, to put this all, put your customizable trip together. Hillary, we have some questions as well. Um, I don't know if you want to jump in with any comments before we jump into question and answer period. Uh, let's just go ahead with the questions, but just real fast, I'll say, you know, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. And I, I do want to invite everyone listening to, to do, come join us on Safari. It's, it's going to be magical. It is magical, and, and Zimbabwe is, is especially magical, I think, because of, of all these things we've discussed today. Um, one of the questions we have here, uh, related to um, the walking, uh, how fit do I have to be on safari and how much walking is involved? Um, I think MTS rates this as a moderate um, moderate safari in terms of your level of activity, but again, that's very much dependent upon your interest. We can amp up the level of adventure and the amount of walking. As I mentioned, we can do, you could exclusively walk based from Bomani Tented Lodge and from Josie Benini um, and, and spend your days, you know, four to eight hours if you wanted to walking out in the bush. That's definitely doable because of the level of guiding 
that we have with the Zimbabwean professional guides. Um, but we can also tailor it way down to spend more time in the vehicle and just do those those um, walks from the vehicle as I, those kind of spontaneous walks in the park. So it's really uh, it's really up to the individual traveler on how much um, how much walking, how much mountain biking you do at Josie Benini, how much canoeing and kayaking you do at Zambezi um, Zambezi Sands. And again, the level of kayaking. If you want to do the rapids, you can do the rapids. If you want to do the serene channels you can do the serene channels. So um, it's what I love about Zimbabwe is a level of flexibility that uh, the guests have um, when they go on safari. And that's something you can discuss with Hillary when you're putting the itinerary um, and your safari together. And then it's something that your guides will sit down with you um, on every morning or every evening before the next day and say, hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing tomorrow. Um, what do you think? Is that is that something that works for you or what would you like to do? And of course, I caveat that all with it a lot depends on the wildlife, where the wildlife is, um, what the wildlife is doing. You know, if uh, if there, all of a sudden there's a lion kill and you had planned to, to spend the day on a walking safari, well, we'll likely say to you, hey, I think we should get in a vehicle and go um, and go see this uh, lion activity because that's something you don't want to miss. Uh, Ted, I might just throw in there as well that for the, the kayaking, we can be pretty flexible with that as well. If you're really interested in doing a full day activity of kayaking when you're in the Victoria Falls vicinity, we can set that up. Um, if kayaking is not something that you want to do, we can remove that as well. So do be aware this is a really flexible sort of sample itinerary that um, I highly recommend as is. But, uh, you know, as Ted says, there's a lot we can do with it for you to make it just perfect for what you're looking for on your trip. Absolutely, and and I forgot to mention. I mean, Victoria Falls is really the adventure um, capital of Africa, certainly of Southern Africa. So, in addition to in in addition to the kayaking, there's also river rafting, as I did mention. You know, and Sobek was one of the pioneers of the Zambezi River back in the day of of rafting that. So, there's that. These are all optional activities. In addition to your safari, you'd want to add a few other days to do these kind of things. Um, you can do micro lighting over the falls, helicopters over the falls, uh, bungee jumping if you're really adventurous, um, and you sign a big, li a big waiver of liability, I'm sure. But um, there's all kinds of other active experiences from Gorge's Lodge, um, which we only spend one night there. But if you add another day, you can do a hike actually from Gorge's down into the uh, Batoka Gorge all the way to the river, and that's about a half day activity. Um, you know, it's a it's a mini, well, a very mini. Uh, Grand Canyon experience, um, but uh, we do a lunch down in the in uh, in the Batoka Gorge. So, as to Hillary's point, you can really customize this to the to your level of activity. Question here about the training for the Zimbabwean guides for doing walking safaris and, and mountain biking safaris. Yeah, as I mentioned briefly, uh, the Zimbabwean professional guides uh, certification is something that takes really a minimum of six to seven years to achieve. So. There are guides. Um, yeah, there's there's several levels of of certifications, and the first one is is the certification for being a driving guide, and that's something you can get after a year or two of training and and um, being mentored by a professional guide, and then you can drive people in the vehicle and and take them out to see the wildlife in the park. But you cannot take guests on on walks. That takes another you know three to four years of training and mentorship with a professional guide. So these guys are extraordinarily well trained. After seven years of of learning about wildlife patterns and about wildlife um, behavior, uh, they're extraordinarily they're they're really almost one with with the wildlife. And so that that's what allows guests to go out safely on walks. And it's something that you the guides gauge their audience, um, gauge their level of fitness, um, gauge you know obviously their age. We're not going to take young children tracking lions on foot. It's just not something that we're, uh, we're willing to do. But, um, but, but they are uh, very knowledgeable about um, how wildlife reacts in certain situations. And they're going to uh, be very conscious of safety. And first and foremost, it's all about safety. But it really is that, that extraordinary training program that these guys go through to become walking guides that allows you to do these um, amazing experiences on foot. And I have to say, Walking safaris really make you feel, uh, it's another level of experience and, and immersion in safari and in Africa than being in a vehicle. It, it removes that barrier between you and the wildlife um, and it, uh, it makes for an incredible um, safari. 
Uh, Tad, I might just throw in a couple of thoughts on that too, is that, um, you know, you as well probably agree, but having been on lots of safaris in many different countries, um, you really do get the feeling when you're there in Zimbabwe that these guys are just a whole level above everybody else. Their intuition and understanding of wildlife behavior is incredible. And funny enough, one of my guides on this trip, I'd actually met before in um, Tanzania in the Serengeti where he had been guiding there. So these guides in Zimbabwe are getting hired to work in other countries because of their high level of qualification and the quality experience that they're giving guests. So they're highly sought after. Absolutely, yeah. That's blessed at uh, at uh, Zambezi Sands. He was uh, he right. was a guide, and he guided <laughs> in Mozambique. In <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy. What a small world, isn't it? But um, yeah, blessed. Uh, he not only is a Zimbabwean walking professional guide, he also is a as a professional river guide, so he can guide both walking safaris and um, kayaking safaris. And prior to going on, uh, prior to working in Tanzania, he was also a dive master in Mozambique. So the guy really is kind of. He's got everything covered as far as guiding in Africa, um, and he is he's based from Zambezi Sands. He really is. He's a legend, so I'm glad you got to meet him. Um, another, I think, last question here is on extensions. Um, what else can I do um, if I'm coming to Africa, coming to Zimbabwe to do this itinerary? Um, where else uh, can I go? What other kind of experiences can I have? And while I'd love to say, you know, why not spend all of your time in Zimbabwe? There certainly are other amazing places in the continent and in Southern Africa in particular. Um, I just went to this uh, map here at the end just to show you um, those ability to extend to other places. One of the nice things about the new airport in Victoria Falls is there's now a, a direct flight from Cape Town here in South Africa up to Victoria Falls. So, and there's more and more flights coming into Cape Town directly from Europe. Um, and from, for example, Emirates flies from Dubai. So being able to avoid Joburg and fly directly into Cape Town or fly into Victoria Falls, do your safari, and then extend to Cape Town. Um, Cape Town is, is, is really one of the world's great cities and, uh, and definitely very highly recommended as an extension. You also have Botswana right here on the doorstep, the, the Okavango Delta extraordinary experience and, and far different than Wangi um, because it's uh, it's really focused on on the water um, so easy to extend from Zimbabwe into into the Okavango Delta Zambia another great um, destination also good for walking right there on our doorstep um, so lots of options and then within Zimbabwe if you wanted to explore other parts of the country Mana pools up here on the on the lower Zambezi um, is is one of Africa's great parks also a UNESCO World Heritage site and I know MTS um, offers extensions up to various camps up in Mana Pools. Um, and that's known not only for being on the river, but also incredible game um, viewing um, and, and wildlife experiences up there. Um, but you're, you know, you're right, right on, the, on the Zambezi River while you're experiencing the game. Similar to Zambezi National Park, which does have game viewing as well, but uh, Mana Pools is, is, an, is another level, more in terms of you know, wangy level of, of wildlife. And then for a smaller experience where you get to see Rhino and actually walk with Rhino, the Matopos National Park near Bulawayo has, um, has a great rhino population, that uh, uh, white rhino, that you can track on foot. So those would be other areas within Zimbabwe that I would recommend for adding um, you know, to your safari experience there. That's all the questions I have on this side, Hillary. If you have any others on your side or anything else to add, I'll throw it back to you to, to wrap it up and just say thanks for for taking the time to learn more about safaris in, in Zimbabwe. And I, uh, look, I know the Invelo team looks forward to welcoming more MTS guests to, uh, to Zimbabwe and to our lodges in the near future. All right, thank you, Tad, so much. This was absolutely wonderful. And uh, in terms of questions, if you have any more, please feel free to call me. Um, my phone number was on that previous slide. I think Tad's pulling it up right now. There it is. And um, you know, happy to answer any details you've got um, questions on. And look forward to seeing you all in Zimbabwe soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care. <laughs>